Hi there, my name is David. I am the camps director here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History and welcome to A New Way to Museum. Today I'm going to be talking with you about some of the tools that we use for digging fossils out of the ground, going from documentation to kind of um, cleaning them off a little bit and making sure that they're safe and secure to actually getting them out of the ground safely and then back to the museum. So, let's say that you are out with permission to be on that land looking for fossils um, really anywhere in the U.S. that's not land that you own. Um, like let's say this is, this is what I would do if I were out looking for fossils to bring back to the museum um, on some land that we have permission to access here in western Kansas. So I would have a good amount of this uh, material with me or in my vehicle and if I found something that I knew was a fossil, it wasn't a question at all, like I was like, okay, I know this is a piece of fossil bone um, or, or what have you, one of the first things that I would do is use some flagging, either a pin flag or just some flagging tape and I would mark where that fossil is in front of me. Fossils, when you first find them, they can be very easy to lose track of on the ground. And that is not a good feeling when you're like, oh, okay, I need to document this. And you get your notebook out, and you get ready to do it, and you're like, wait, where is it? And you're looking around, and you can't find it again, and then your heart drops into your stomach, and it's a very bad feeling. So, flag it, mark it first. We don't leave the flagging there. We just leave it there long enough to not forget where it is until we get started. So once I've got the flagging down, what I would do is get some pictures. Um, camera on a smartphone is perfectly fine for this. You get some kind of background so you can see where this fossil is in that landscape with the flagging on it so you know exactly where it's at. So we get a picture of the site. And then what we might do is get uh, GPS coordinates on it, write those down in our notebook. Um, we keep, I would keep a lot of this stuff in something like this very old beat up um, map clipboard. Have some maps of the area, as well as some very handy locality forms. And these are basically just template forms where we would write down information about that fossil that we're going to collect. This paperwork stays with the fossil until it comes back to the museum and is taken either to the prep lab, that paperwork will likely stay with the fossil all the way until if it gets um, put into our collections, like down here. So we found a fossil, we tagged it, we photographed it, we got a GPS unit, uh, GPS coordinates, and We've got our notes taken for it. Okay, great. We've handled all of our paperwork. We're not going to lose the fossil. First step's done. Now we need to f get a better idea of what it is that we are dealing with. Like we would take notes the entire way through this process. We're not going to stop taking notes at any point. Because um, you want to bring all this information back to the museum so that collections manager, curator, preparators all have as much information as possible to work with when the fossil comes back here. So I'm probably going to use things first like these brushes. I'm not going to get any metal tools yet. I just need to clean the area off and make sure that I can see as much as possible that's up on the surface. So I really like these kind of cheap painter brushes. Um, these heavier brushes that you might find someplace for like sweeping out the inside of a car. Um, these are really nice just because they're really big and sturdy. Um, so these are great. I really like these. We've got lots of them for our field paleontology camps. So you clean off the site and then once you're pretty confident that you have all the surface stuff cleaned off, you might use uh, a little bit of consolidant. So in this case, it's basically um, a liquid adhesive that we mix on our own. And we will put that in spots that look a little broken just to keep it from breaking more. It kind of helps hold everything together. The nice thing about this and why we use it instead of other compounds is you can re-dissolve it very easily. Other kinds of glues, um, they're hard to re-dissolve. And so if we were to use something like Elmer's glue or super glue or anything like that, 
we bring it back and hand it to our preparators to clean, they're not going to be able to re-dissolve that glue if they need to. And that's a huge headache. So we use this stuff that's re-dissolvable. Um, and that's a really important component of all of this. Um, we let that dry. And once that's done, we'll actually start getting some larger tools out. But we're going to work really slowly. So we're probably going to move some of the top rock off just to see if there's more of it right below the surface that we need to f figure out before we start digging holes down into the ground. I really like um, scratch alls, like this little guy right here. We have lots of these too. Um, and they're really great for going through thin layers of like that soft chalks and shales and other rocks that we have here in Kansas. So yeah, one of my favorite beginning digging tools that, uh, that we have. Once we are confident that we've found everything that's kind of close to the surface, um, we'll kind of make a line around that fossil, so it's getting a, a little bit of a distance away, and then we'll start digging down. So that's what we would call uh, trenching. So we're starting to dig down into the ground around the fossil. And when we start trenching, that's when we're going to start getting out some of these bigger tools. So. For example, very classic geological hammer with this nice flat head. Um, the pointy ones, the pointy picks, are fine too, but they, they're not as universally useful. I actually like these a little bit better just because with that softer rock like we have out here, again, chalks and shales, um, you can actually move more rock like per swing, in my opinion, with one of these than you can with one of those picks. That said, I do use both just depending on the situation. Um, another handy combination, um, nice five pound sledge and a couple different kinds of chisels. Um, these will do a similar job as your rock hammer, um, but these have a little bit more reach. So again, just having a variety of tools depending on the situation you find yourself in can be real handy. Something I forgot earlier, but I will mention now that's really important. Once you get the fossil exposed, getting some photos of it under a grid so that when your preparators get that jacket, plaster jacket with the fossil in it, we'll talk about plaster jacketing in just a sec, they know roughly where everything is and we would actually do something like marking which end is which. So we get this nice grid give those fossils to like our preparators and that way they're like, oh, okay, I can see with scale everything that's in this picture um, that I should be expecting to see for this fossil. So photos with grid squares, photos with a scale bar, all super important parts of this process. And again, you're making notes every day for every part of this that you're doing so that when you turn those records over, everyone has a very clear idea of what work's already been done including what kind of adhesive you used. Okay, so we've got the top kind of exposed. We know what's there. We roughly know what's on the surface of the, of the ground. Um, and we're starting to dig down. Great. Now we have a trench, a shallow trench around the fossil. We didn't find anything new as we were digging down. So we're, and we're below the layer where that fossil is. Great. Now we can start getting out some of the bigger stuff in order to move a little bit more rock a little quicker. And that's where things like these big picks and shovels come in. These are going to break up a fair amount of rock pretty quickly. We also have things like jackhammers, concrete saws, things like that. Those are specialized tools that we don't use quite as often. These are real staples. We use these all the time. And then the shovel is really just to clear debris out. Like we're not really digging into the rock with them. We're using it to just scoop and remove. Okay. So we've got the fossil, it's out um, in like a kind of like a pedestal. And now we need to protect it. We need to make sure that we're not going to damage it as we're continuing to dig around it. So we have these burlap strips right here, just strips of regular old burlap. And we're going to cut them like this from a big roll. And then we're going to soak them in some water and then wring them out a bit. And then we're going to dunk them in a mixture of water and plaster of Paris. This is a very old, tried, true method of protecting fossils. Um, but before we put any of that on the rock, we're going to cover it with probably either like toilet paper, paper towel, something like that. So you're providing a layer in between the plaster bandages and the actual fossil itself. 
because she's getting the plaster on the fossils is kind of uh, not great for them. So then, once you've got like paper toweling or, or newspaper, toilet paper, something like that, covering, not a newspaper because the ink can leak, don't do that. Um, then you can put on your plaster bandages and you're basically making a cast to cover that fossil, to protect it. Once you've got that cast wrapped around that block of rock, then you can worry about actually popping it out of the ground. Um, and for that, again, we'll use some of our metal tools to kind of dig underneath the fossil, being going very slow and carefully because you don't want your whole thing to collapse. That's very bad. Um, it'll break your fossil and, and all your work will be for nothing. Um, once we've got the underside also fairly well plastered, then we can get some tools in and we um, can pop that piece of rock and flip it over. And once it's flipped, we get it in the back of our truck and we bring it back to the museum. Thank you for joining us for a new way to museum. I hope you had a good time and learned some things about how we go about getting fossils from outside back to the museum. Hope, and we look forward to having you join us for our next video. Thanks for joining us in a new way to museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.